Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave, your chess teacher online. Today we're going to talk about basic endgames. The first endgame we're going to look at today is the one we have an extra queen and an extra rook. So of course white is winning and in order to win you have to limit your opponent's king. So this king is not limited, this king is in the middle. You want it to be in the edge, such as this rank or this file. So in the edge of the board, so you can checkmate it. That's where it's most limited. So first things first, you're going to create what we call a fence. This is called a fence, this is called a wall. Now this king cannot jump over the wall, so this king has to go back. For instance, if the king goes back here, then you're very happy. You create another wall and you do that over and over. But black, given that black is going to pose as many, as many problems to you, is going to try to stay as close to the fence as possible. So if you move this queen to, to, to f5 check, hoping for this, that would be a mistake. In fact, this would be good for white. But the reason why queen f5 would be a mistake is because now the king gets to d4 still in the center so you didn't of course you can go back right but you didn't manage to push it back so what you're gonna do now is not move this queen but move the rook now you have two walls or two fences now there's no way this king can jump over this wall that was the previous wall and there's a new wall so he has to be pushed back and i think you're already getting this you're gonna keep doing that once again we have this wall here so there's no way the king can escape and another wall, another fence. This whole rank is occupied. And that's why we call it staircase. Because the last moves, it's like going up, 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 step by step. And that would be checkmate. End game number two. It's pretty much the same. We have a, a rook instead of a queen. And you also have to limit your opponent's king. But now you have to be careful because the, the rook might be taken. So for instance, if you play a move like rook f4, which is creating a fence, you're right. It is, but it, it's losing the rook. And this would still be winning, by the way, and we will talk about it. But what happens now is you don't want to sacrifice a rook. You want to create a fence for like this, for instance, right? So you create a fence and let's say black plays king e6. Can you create a fence with rook f5? No, that would be a bad idea because then king takes. And once again, we lost the rook. So what you're going to do is you're going to go all the way over here. And then you're going to try to create the fence like this. So for instance, black is going to try this. You're going to create a fence. Now, these are two walls, so pretty unstoppable. And against king c6, create another wall. So now these two walls are... The king is getting limited a little bit. And once again, king b7, you can't play this. You're going to lose the rook, so all the way far away from the king. And the, the king is going to stay as close as defense as possible in hopes you move this rook. But you're going to move the other one once again. And eventually, you're going to reach a position like this. So that would be checkmate. End game number three. In this one, we only have an extra queen, but it's still winning, of course, and you limit your opponent. So this is what we've been doing so far. We're going to play queen g4, creating what we call a wall. So this king cannot jump over. It. So it's it's getting closer to, to, to limiting our opponent's king. So what happens if our king does... Sorry, not our king. So if our opponent plays something like king d6, that would be a bad move because then you just keep going keep going um, smaller and smaller. And, and your opponent would be very nice if, if it allowed you to do this now this this is the best wall you can ever have in a chessboard and what the only thing you're going to do is you're going to bring this king so your opponent is not going to do that your opponent after queen g4 is going to stay close to the fence so if you try to make it smaller then they're just going to jump over it now what you're going to do now is you need help of the king so you're going to bring the king king g2 your opponent is going to try to keep as close as possible and eventually you bring your king and after king e5 you realize that this king is protecting these three squares you're going to push the king. So just to make it very clear. Queen h5. Checking. Now this king is very, very useful because it's covering all these three squares. Which is the only three squares that, th that this king could go to in order to jump the wall. But it can't because the king is there. So the king has to finally go back. And you're going to keep doing that. So you're going to go to d4, let's say. King d6. You push it back. Now the king has to go back, king e5, king e7, you push it back. David, what happens if he goes to c7? You follow it. King d7, already pushing back. King b7, you insist. King h7, you insist, and at some point, black won't be able to insist. And then you push it back. And eventually, you do something what we call a waiting move. So you play queen f7. There's nothing black can do other than king c8. And once again, we have this opposition, and we checkmate.
Endgame number four, believe it or not, it is possible to do it with only a rook as well. So once again, we create this fence. This is what we've been doing so far. And in this case, after king f5, it's going to be very, very annoying. So this one's going to take longer a little bit, but it's still winning. So you're going to move the rook far away, always far away. You don't want this king bothering you. So this rook is very good. It's a long scope piece. So it's functioning as a wall, even though it's all the way in the corner or in the edge. But this, this rook in the edge is very nice because it's a long scope piece. So the king is going to stay close to the fence or to the wall. If black keeps going back, that would be doing you a favor because then you're going to get to this position and that's going to be easier for you. So in this position, black is going to stay close to the fence like this. And what you're going to do is you can't improve this rook. This, this rook is already being a wall. So you're going to have to bring your king. King g2. Now, once again, this king is going to stay as close to the fence as possible with king b5. You bring your king. King c5, you bring your king. The opponent attacks your rook, you play rook h4. Far away from the king, still creating this fence, this wall. King c5, king d5, sorry, king d3, king d5. And now, you recognize this from last, last endgame. This is called opposition. Once your kings are opposing like this, you can push. Because there's no way black can get close to the other king. There's no way. So black has to go back. And now you've improved because this fence is limiting. So you're limiting your opponent's king. And once again, you're going to get close to the king. If king is king e6, you, you push back. So king c6, you follow the king. King d6 would be pushing back. So king d6, king c c4. Once again, king c6 would be pushing back. So king a6. And last, at least, oh, now we finally get to push the king back because of king b6, rook h6. And of course, if your opponent goes something like king a7, you can create a fence anyway, right? This would be pretty relieving. So the biggest test for white is after king b6, you finally oppose kings and you push back. And once again, we go all again. We, if we insist, we insist. If we push, w would this be a good idea, pushing like this? No, because then the king escapes and we have to start from scratch. So we follow, we follow, we move the rook. And now king f7, we, this is a opposition, we push. And eventually, after all of this work, we're going to reach a position like this, where black is going to reach something what we call Zugzwan. But king b6, Zugzwan means all moves you have are bad. So king b6, king b8, and you checkmate. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the end games that you can't win. So if you have an extra knight, unfortunately you can't win. Same thing applies to the bishop. The bishop itself with the king cannot checkmate this black king. It's, it's not possible. Amazingly, two knights are not winning either. Many people think this is winning because it's six points. You would believe that, but it's unfortunately not the case. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And as always, have a nice day.